help, I have to sell my current house before I buy my next one. Where do I start? This is a question I get all the time. Stay tuned and I'll give you my tips. Hey everybody, Melanie Atkinson here, Realtor with Smith & Associates in beautiful Tampa Bay, Florida. Do you remember when you bought your very first home and you were nervous about the process, but you made it through and you got to closing day? All you had to do was worry about being a buyer in that transaction. Now you want to move to your second, third, or fourth home, and now you have to worry about being both a buyer and a seller. You need the equity from your current home to purchase the next one. Now the stress is multiplied. Add to that a cross-country move to a city you don't know and that stress can be almost crippling. And how do I know that? Because I talk to a lot of you. So today I'm gonna do my best to help you. Tip number one, understand your finances. There is a difference between needing to sell your current home to buy the next one and wanting to sell your current home before you buy the next one. Of course you don't wanna pay two mortgages, nobody does. But if you can technically qualify to purchase your next home without selling your other home, that is a different financial situation than those who have to sell the house in order to qualify for the loan on their next house. If you fall into the category of wanting to sell your house before you buy the next one, then you have a little bit more freedom when it comes to purchasing your home. You don't have to use the same contingencies that somebody would have to use who has to sell their house. This will give you a leg up in negotiations, especially in seller's markets. Sellers in that type of market do not wanna worry about whether your other house sells or not. They probably have other buyers that wanna purchase their house that don't have that contingency. Now you can still sell your current home and use those proceeds. The difference is it's not contingent on you selling that house to buy the next one. And that is a big difference. So if you fall in the other category and you need to sell your home in order to qualify for your next one, you are certainly not alone, that's most buyers. However, what you need to understand that in order to protect your escrow deposit, your offers for the next home are going to be contingent on the sale of your current home. This is an additional contingency that not all buyers have. It's an extra hurdle in closing. A lot of sellers would really prefer to not have to worry about that extra contingency from their buyer. A buyer that doesn't have another home to sell is much less risky. However, it's okay. If your offer is the only one that the seller has and your terms are good, then most sellers will accept it, so don't worry. I do want you all to know that it does get trickier in a multiple offer situation, so set your expectations accordingly. So tip number two, don't put the cart before the horse. The cart in this scenario is your next home. The horse is your current home. If you can't buy that home without selling your current home, then you really need to focus on the current home sale. It is so easy for people to be overwhelmed and they wanna be excited about their next city or their next move that they spend tons of time focusing and researching online, which is great. I know that's probably why a lot of you are even watching this channel to begin with. However, in the beginning of the process, you really need to spend most of your time and energy focus on the sale of your current house because you can't move to that new city and buy that bigger house until you sell that one. So spend the majority of your time focused on getting that house ready. So all the things that you need to do, decluttering, repair the items that need to be repaired, get your agent involved in your current city to come over and give you advice on what to do to prep your house and do all of those things. It can be really time consuming and it might take longer than what you think, so start now. And when you have extra time, you can absolutely go browsing online and look for houses in your new city, watch videos on your new city, get excited about the move. But the priority has to be getting your house ready for sale so you can sell it quickly and for the most money. Tip number three, if you're moving to a new city, you need to find an agent in that city. So in the beginning of the process is for you to do your first reach outs to agents in your new city. Now, some people are moving and they have a reload company helping them that gives them an agent and other people are just flying blind. If you're one of those people that does have a reload agent, please keep in mind that you do have a say in the agent that they give you. If you're having issues with your agent, make sure you call your reload rep and they should be able to help you out. And as you all know, all agents are not created equal, so you do need to do your due diligence. If you aren't using a relocation company and you have an agent in your current city that you love, ask him or her who they would recommend in your new city. There's a good chance they have referral partners. 
or you can ask your coworkers in your new city if they have anybody that they would recommend. You can even contact me regardless of the city you're moving to. My brokerage has a whole network of referral partners around the country that we can set you up with a great agent. When you reach out to that agent, be very specific about the things that are important to you and listen to that agent for feedback. That agent should be able to focus your online searches to areas that best fit your needs. You will also be able to put together a plan for your in-person visits, which is tip number four, visiting with a purpose. If you have enough time before your move to take multiple trips to your new city, please take advantage of that. And if you have that time, your first trip to your new city should be an introduction trip, not a house hunting trip. Why not a house hunting trip? Because if you aren't a ready buyer, the houses that you're seeing now are probably not gonna be available whenever you are ready. However, touring neighborhoods, talking with builders, and getting an overall feel for the city is really the best use of your time. Just remember that if you're talking to builders and your agent is not with you, just let them know that you are working with an agent so it doesn't cause problems down the road. Now you can visit as many times as you like, but your last visit will obviously be the home buying visit. And when you come for that one, your current home should be under contract. Now, why does it have to be under contract? That brings me to tip number five, making offers. You know which neighborhood you wanna be in, you've been keeping track of the inventory coming on and off the market, and most importantly, your current house is under contract. You are now ready to buy. You set out with your capable real estate agent to find the perfect house. And remember what I said earlier about the contingency, because you have to sell your house to buy the next one, there may be sellers that don't want that extra hurdle with your contingency. Try not to be offended by that. Most builders are totally fine with the contingency, so new construction is an option for you. If your current home that's under contract has already undergone inspections and appraisals, make sure you're letting the sellers and their listing agents know that, because that means you're farther along the process and your contingency is a little less risky at that point. And don't be surprised if the listing agent in your new city wants to contact your agent in your old city to double check on that contract to make sure everything's moving smoothly. Tip number six, navigating the move. Timing is super important when you're dealing with two transactions. I always advise to make sure you have a fairly long escrow period on the sale of your current house. 45 to 60 days works, even a little bit longer if you can. You need that time to get to your new city, to find the house, to put it under contract, and have enough time to process your next loan. If you're gonna have a moving company, make sure you consult with them early on and find out approximately how long it will take them to get from your current city to your new city. If it's a few days, then that gives you plenty of time to close on your old house, pack up your car, drive to your new city. By that time, the money will be posted and you can close on your new house. Hopefully, if everything works out great, the furniture truck will show up shortly thereafter. I do have clients that try to do back-to-back -back closings and they work, they're definitely doable, but they are stressful because if there's any hiccup, there have been times where furniture trucks have literally been sitting outside of a house with nowhere to unload it. In summary, selling while buying is tricky, but it's definitely doable. Getting agents to help you during the process is key and also focusing on the sale before you focus on the buy side. Once your house is ready, then you can get super excited about your new city. Remember that the more desirable your current house is, is the more control you're going to have over the process of that closing. You'll get a higher price, you'll be able to ask for a longer escrow period, and everything will go smoother. If you're looking for something else to watch on my channel, check out my video called Five Home Selling Pitfalls You Need to Avoid. Happy house hunting, everybody, and thank you so much for watching. With love, Melanie.